Hey guys, unfortunately the news has been a little slow in Britain lately, other than the tragic death of Amy Winehouse. Should I make a joke about that? No, no, no. Yeah, you're right. And with that in mind, our stories come from overseas. A woman in America was arrested for groping a member of airport security. In my perverted mind, the best part of this story is that the security officer involved was also a woman. Now, I'm a 20-year-old man in a Western society, so I can't help thinking of this. Oh wait, it says that uh, one of them is a pensioner. Ugh. So she's been arrested and she's waiting to see what's going to happen to her. And that should be the end of it, right? WRONG! There are Facebook groups all over... Well, Facebook. Calling for her to be acquitted and describing her as courageous. Hang on a second. This is my idea of courage. This is not my idea of courage. Hack, hack. If grabbing a stranger's breasts was considered an act of courage, I'd have a medal instead of a criminal record. But probably the most annoying part of this story is that she's been likened to Rosa Parks. Okay, a black woman in 1950s America refuses to give up her seat on the bus to a white person, thereby becoming a hero and inspiration to oppressed black people everywhere. A woman in 2011 doesn't like the fact that there are some people whose job it is to maintain some level of national security by searching people for dangerous items, potentially saving thousands of human lives, so she grabs somebody's boobs. Yep, that's definitely the same thing. I mean, it's not like America's suffered any terrorism in the last 10 years, is it? And it's not like airport security would be blamed if they didn't search people and somebody was allowed to carry a bomb into the country. Basically, no matter what happens, there are always going to be people who are unhappy with the way things work. And the best way to deal with these people is by saying, shut up and hold still while I touch your bum. A 50-year-old grandfather in South Africa woke up to find himself in a morgue. His family walked in and saw him unconscious, so they assumed he was dead and called the undertakers. Yeah, that's something you might want to confirm before taking any action. My ex-girlfriend didn't move once, and it's lucky I waited because it turns out she was sleeping. You know, that thing that everyone does, except Christian Bale in The Machinist, but he's only pretend. What amazes me is that nobody checked to make sure he was dead. His entire family saw him, and not once did someone say, are you sure he's not breathing? Or, should we check his pulse? Or, Grandad, you awake? And they had a lot of time to do that. Doubtless they looked at him for a bit. Then there were a few minutes while somebody went away to call the Undertakers. Then they had to wait for the Undertakers. And then the Undertakers had to pick the guy up, wheel him out of the house and into the van. And not once did anybody check to make sure the poor bloke was actually dead. You know, I really want to keep my faith in humanity. But something about this story reeks of wishful thinking. Hi, Grandad. Grandad, you okay? Oh dear, I think he might be dead. He's dead. He's dead, everyone! Take him away. Apparently they thought he'd suffered an asthma attack, which I don't really think is much of an excuse. I'm asthmatic, and I've never woken up in a fridge surrounded by the recently deceased. But wake up surrounded by the recently deceased, he did and proceeded to do what I think we'd all do upon realising we were in a body bag. He screamed, and the two supposedly professional mortuary attendants ran away because they thought he was a ghost. <laughs> the irony is that after being in a fridge for 21 hours, this guy woke up with a potentially life-threatening case of hypothermia and had to be taken to hospital. He's okay, but I bet he's dead angry. Sorry, that was the best joke I could come up with. And when they called his family to tell them that he was still alive, they were surprised and shocked. What's that? He's alive. Oh, that's wonderful. He's alive, everyone. Take off the party hats. They also said he's lucky that he survived so long in a chilled mortuary. I'll say. I mean, look at most people who end up in a mortuary. Dead. This story is all based upon assumption. His family assumed that he was dead. The mortuary attendants assumed that he was a ghost. So the obvious lesson here is that when you assume, you make an ass of you. Don't look at me, I had nothing to do with it. A man grew back the tip of his own finger, thanks to a substance made out of a pig's bladder. He sliced it off on the propeller of a remote-controlled plane, and his brother sent him a powder that grew it back in four weeks. They're now using this stuff to grow organs, and in theory, entire limbs. I know I covered something similar last time, but this is even better. It's like buying a McDonald's and saying, Can I supersize that? And can I have the little toy too? Comments etc. down below. This is a horse, and this is me signing off. Have fun, guys. Come on, bro.